Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokono Man at YouTube with a, another modeling review tutorial. Today I'll be demonstrating how to apply a flat clear coat. My preference is Tamiya XF86 flat coat. Uh, not to be confused with another product in the X range called flat base that's used for adding into actual paint jars and making a gloss paint into a matte paint. We're talking about uh, top coat. The reason why I'm making this video is without a proper understanding of this product you can easily make uh, mistakes that will create blemishes on your model such as white patches or your model turning completely uh, frost white, um, the tone of the color changing, details or panel lines uh, becoming accented with a white film or decals silvering. This is caused because paint is a mixture of pigment, binder and gloss resin. The clear resin that sits on the paint adheres to the surface and also reflects light, thus the glossy finish. A matte paint has these clear flakes embedded onto the top of the gloss surface, thus preventing light reflecting, creating a flat effect. This product is only your uh, clear uh, resin with these flakes on top of it. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to make a batch of clear paint pre-mixed to be used straight out of the bottle into your airbrush or hand painting to help prevent this uh, buildup of pigment and making your models go all frosty. What you will need is a jar of XF86 clear flat, some X20A thinner, and what I highly recommend, the X20A Thinner 46 milliliter jar. We're going to be mixing three part thinner to the entire uh, 10 mil of uh, clear mat. Normally on the Tamiya website, it is recommended that uh, one part thinner to two part paint is preferred for ideal hand painting and airbrushing. But we're not gonna get a marbly or disturbed um, finish because there's no paint pigment in the mix. The method of application is very straightforward. Uh, sometimes the pigment will collect at the bottom after a while. All you have to do is uh, shake it quite a bit. Then uh, load straight out of the jar into your airbrush. Uh, airbrush at a low PSI, 11 to uh, 15. Keep the surface about 10 centimeters away and only dust on until it appears that it applies onto the surface dry and uh, do not build up to the point where it starts pulling or getting gloss. If the liquid uh, pulls on the surface, it's gonna drain itself and spread to detail and panel lines. It's going to uh, harden and uh, turn out white in those areas. So just apply as thin as possible, wait two, three hours to dry as it's a very slow drying mix. And uh, once um, dulled and hard, apply again. Two, three coats is all you need unless you want to go for semi-transparent or gloss or something. The example here is two spoons. The spoon on the right is just Mr. Hobby Matte Brown and on the left is one coat of the mix. In this picture I'm dealing with a blue color lacquer and it's a very deep gloss because I applied three to four coats of clear paint. On the far right is uh, the full gloss and as we go to the left step by step each spoon has a coat of uh, clear so the second one is one coat third two coats three three coats and as you can see that with light directly shined into it the sheen is a sort of uh, distorted and has a frost like appearance this form of applying matte is not perfect uh, depending on how smooth the surface is, it can um, go right through paint. Paint is a bit transparent in nature in color, sheen and texture. But we're not painting spoons, we're painting model kits. Model kits do not naturally look uh, shiny unless they're uh, resin or the Bandai Gundam kits. 
So with just uh, a couple of uh, coats, two to three coats normally should be enough. Uh, tips to get an absolutely ideal matte model would include if your surface is extremely shiny, flat and bare like a spoon, use a 300 grit sandpaper dipped in water and buff the surface until it looks a tad rough. Uh, primer. Primer is really uh, good. It's uh, dull in nature and it sort of makes the paint a bit more solid from the surface. So it's going to um, hide the uh, smoothment with grit content or thickness. Where possible, try to use matte paints. If you can't find uh, a matte alternative, you can buy a flat base, which is pretty much the um, flat pigment solid. Add a tiny bit into your paint um, jar, stir it up, and it should appear more flat than gloss. On the final surface, if you do need to apply a gloss coat for decals or panel line washes, apply a clear gloss coat 50-50 uh, mix with uh, thinner and only do one layer. It doesn't have to be a deep gloss. It only needs to make the surface smooth to apply your decals or your wash. Then a couple of layers of your uh, flat finish or matte finish to get an ideal looking paint finish. Other things to note is drying. Um, this paint can be very deceptive when you apply because it also does have uh, clear resin and thinners and all sorts of things mixed into it. When applied uh, to the model, it's going to look uh, very, very glossy. Uh, just leave it and let it dry. Uh, Tamir um, acrylic paints have a history of slow drying and very slow curing. And since we're adding a lot of thinner, it's going to extend the time. So once you apply a single coat, leave it, ignore it, don't touch it, don't use a hairdryer on it because you're going to push uh, the paint around and build up in certain areas. Let it naturally dry for two to three hours, ideally even longer than that, overnight if possible. All in all, this concludes my video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, stay tuned and subscribed for further content. I do apologize this video is a bit dry, but I feel it's a tad important. I may have forgotten to add that um, this slurry can be used in hand painting. Just a uh, dry brush and making sure that you don't pull uh, paint or liquid into seam lines in detail and you should get the same result. Catch you guys next time.